Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you today about road signs and reading road signs as a CDL driver, a bus or truck driver. And this is an important skill that you're going to need to learn how to do. Uh, I got something funky going on with the computer here, so we'll try and get all that sorted out. And uh, we'll be right back with that information. Actually, we're just going to switch over to the main camera because I think you already saw the logo. So <laughs> we'll just forget that and uh, carry on here. So uh, Ryan is here and Wheelman is here from, uh, he's, where did he say he was? He is in the Iberian Peninsula. I'm not sure where the Iberian Peninsula is, but he says that there are borders. Uh, we talked about crossing international borders yesterday, international borders in Europe, and they're not as uh, strict as they are here between Canada and the United States. So Happy Easter to everybody. Uh, the Easter Bunny, despite the, despite the world crisis that's going on, did visit the house this morning uh, here in British Columbia. Hall phase is here. Carrie is here from Minnesota. Snowy Minnesota. Hope everyone has a good Easter, Easter dis, despite social distancing and uh, the Easter Bunny having COVID-19. So, uh, yeah. So today we're going to talk a little bit about road signs. I'm not going to talk a lot about it, just a little bit about it. And... Uh, talk about the importance of that in CDL driving. I know in this day and age, uh, we have GPS, you know, uh, maps on our phones and those types of things. And, you know, it makes it incredibly easy to get around and navigate. Uh, it's not always right. It does make mistakes. And, uh, you know, when you kind of zero in on the place that you need to get to, uh, sometimes the pinpoint location on the map is not exact and I have had students in the past who've had difficulty finding places because route planning and navigation is one of the subject topics that I do with uh, new drivers when I teach them how to drive a truck. Hall phase, I watch my church service on YouTube. Awesome. Yes, so a lot of uh, churches and whatnot are live streaming and it's really great and effective. However, I have to I have to advocate that this soon be over because uh, you know we need to be near other people. We need to congregate. We need to be with our friends. We need to be with our families. And this is dragging on. I mean, we're on day 10 of the live stream here. So we're almost at two weeks of the live stream. And it was a week or 10 days before that. So we are almost into a month of this now. And I just, you know, I question how long this is going to drag on. Anyway, happy Easter to everybody. Uh, Muncie, Indiana. My friend Robert is there. Uh, giveaways, happy Easter, happy Easter to everybody else. That's absolutely brilliant. So uh, tell you a story about road signs. Now, I'll just before I get started on road signs and truck driving and bus driving, one of the things I'm going to talk about is uh, when you get to driving truck, I talked about this briefly in terms of New York and height signs and those types of things. Now when you're driving truck, you're driving a bus, it now becomes three dimensional. Because one of the things when you drive a passenger vehicle, you never think about height. You just it doesn't enter your head <laughs> uh, you don't have to now when you're driving a truck you're driving a bus you have to think about height the, the vehicle now becomes three-dimensional and it's another thing that you need to consider the only story that I ever heard about people driving a car who had to think about what was overhead was a couple I knew some years ago who were saying that uh, they had bicycles on the roof rack and uh, were driving across a the field they were attending some event sports event or whatnot and uh, for whatever reason, the, the driver decided that they were going to drive underneath the soccer uh, goalposts. <laughs> and his wife is yelling at him. Uh, his wife is yelling at him, whoa, 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 you got bicycles on the top of the car. So very seldom do we have to kind of think about uh, height on our vehicle. But when it comes to large commercial vehicles, you have to be thinking about height. You have to be thinking about road signs because the road signs are going to tell you that third dimension up down and how high your vehicle is so that's one of the things you got to be thinking about uh carrie says hopefully the medical e experts will figure something out soon and yes they definitely need to be doing that uh carrie i mean other countries are doing voluntary social distancing and have not shut down their economies uh we do not need to be shutting down our economies it's time to move on beyond that uh wheelman we don't have log books for trucks these are trucks equipped with digital tach tachographs uh, sort of a black box for trucks. And yes, uh, Wheelman, they had those here some years ago, those uh, tachographs, uh, but they moved away from them. I think a lot of drivers were saying that it was violating their civil rights and those types of things. But the interesting part is, is that we, uh, the United States has come back to that. 
And now, uh, within the next couple of years, we're going to go to that here in Canada. They're called ELDs, electronic log devices. And uh, yeah, they implemented those. Those became mandatory last year in the United States. So uh, uh, yeah, so that's what they do there. And they have something similar in Australia. Uh, they still have actual log books. Uh, I don't know whether they've gone to ELDs in, in Australia as well. But in Australia, they have a lot more traffic cameras and uh, the DOT for lack of whoever else it is, you know, depends on whether it's uh, Vic Roads in the state of Victoria or it's the New South Wales uh, Transportation Authority. Uh, they have access to those traffic cameras because they can pinpoint where those trucks are at any given time. So they're pretty much on the hours of service regulations, so to speak. So uh, one of the stories to tell you about uh, road signs and how important it is for truck drivers to be able to read road signs and take note of the information on road signs i was training a guy some years ago when i worked for a flat deck company out of ottawa and he was brand new at a truck driving school and i was trying to get into his head that he needed to read the road signs uh, as i said this was before gps and road signs are incredibly important especially when you're traveling in areas you haven't driven in before. And even an odd tweak on a road sign, even though it means the same thing, uh, it can kind of throw you off a little bit. And here's one of, one of the things that kind of throws me off a little bit is most of the traffic lights in Canada are vertical. They're this way. But there's a number of places in the United States that you'll drive into where the traffic light will be horizontal. And just the fact that the traffic light is horizontal, it still works the same. Green is still in the same place, yellow, red, uh, any advanced traffic lights and those types of things. But it's a little weird when you first see it the first time and it kind of throws you off. It kind of messes with your head a, a little bit. So know that uh, in terms of you know driving in different places or road signs are gonna be a little bit different. Uh, information signs as we, you know, most of the time here in Canada, our information signs are going to be uh, you know, hospital signs are going to be white on blue backgrounds. Uh, information signs are going to be white on brown backgrounds. Uh, those can be different in different places in the States, in Australia, in Africa, uh, for wheelmen there in Europe and whatnot. They're going to be a little bit different. But all of that information could potentially be pertinent to you driving safely and driving defensively and driving proactively as a bus or truck driver. So you need to start doing that. The difficulty with that when you first start driving truck or bus or you start driving a larger vehicle is there's so much other stuff going on that you're not really paying attention to the road signs. And I think that's what was happening to this guy here. Uh, and, you know, I was probably a bit tough on him, a bit more tough, tougher than I needed to do. And, I, you know, I don't think he was ever going to cut it as a truck driver anyway. But, <laughs> you know, after the 15th time of asking what the last road sign was that he went past, I finally said to him, I said, just pull the truck over, just stop the truck. And uh, I made him get out and actually run back to see what the sign was. And it was probably about a half a kilometer back before he, you know, and, you know, he finally got into his head that he had to read all the road signs after that and take note of what the information was. All right. Uh, Ryan, I studied the road signs and symbols in my home country. Uh, there are symbol signs. Yes. And they are similar, Ryan. Most of the road signs in the world are the same shape. And they mean the same thing. So a stop sign is the same everywhere in the world. Yield signs are the same everywhere in the world. Regulatory signs and those types of things. So they are, for the most part, fairly consistent internationally. They're going to be the same signs. There is a little bit of difference between them. I mean, if you look at some of the European signs, they're going to be a little bit different. But fairly easy to catch up on. And when I drove in Australia, I mean, the road signs were a little bit different. Uh, but for the most part, they mean the same thing. And Wheelman says that uh, very strict hours of service regulations in Europe, and it's the same thing in Australia. They're really, really strict. And this is the reason that we're going to ELDs, electronic log devices in uh, the United States and in Canada. And, you know, in my personal opinion, you know, when I drove in the 1990s and it was still log sheets, I mean, you could do... You could do a lot of things to manipulate those funny pages so you could drive a lot more hours than you really should have been driving. And uh, here in Canada, uh, you're allowed to drive 13 hours. You're allowed to work 15 hours a day. Uh, that's just, in my mind, that's just too many hours. It's too many hours to work. So they need to bring the hourly wages up. They need to bring the wages up for truck drivers. 
and they need to reduce the number of hours that drivers are working during the day because you can just work yourself to the, into the into the ground and it's just you know people think that driving a truck isn't that hard uh, sit behind the wheel of a truck for 10 hours and push that thing up and down the road uh, it's a lot of work it it's can wear you out all right uh, Ryan do you know any other countries have similar signs uh, same as in North America just as, as I said Ryan all of the signs internationally are more or less the same there are some minor differences but for the most part it's easy to move between countries and learn how to drive I mean obviously if you're moving from driving on the right hand side of the road to driving on the left hand side of the road for example if you're going to Australia or, or Europe or not Europe rather but the UK or going to Japan Malaysia those countries that drive on the left side of the road that's going to be a bit more challenging because you're on the other side of the road but you know the signs are going to be more or less the same uh, why would a truck want a truck driver want to work for for free since there's a limit how do you oh okay hall phase I know what you're asking me uh, <laughs> so let me just clarify in terms of we're getting a little off topic here in terms of log sheets and the and the amount of hours that you can work uh, most of the truck truck drivers that are working with a log sheet so you only have to so just kind of an old high overview when you're driving truck or you're driving bus, you have to keep a log sheet if you're running more than 100, 100 miles from your home terminal or 160 kilometers from your home terminal. So those are most of the people who are running long haul. Now, what you need to understand is, is that most truck drivers who are running long haul are being pay, paid piecemeal. You're being paid by the hour. Or, sorry, not by the hour. You're being paid by the mile. Okay? So the more miles you run, the more money you make. And the log sheets are not tied to your pay. The log sheets are simply, uh, you know, therefore hours of service regulation and there to keep, make, uphold some sort of safety on our road so drivers are not driving tired. Uh, however, it's in conflict with how the pay structure works. The pay structure works is piecemeal. So the more miles you, ma you, you make, the more miles you drive, the more money you make. So if you can figure out how to manipulate your log sheets, so that you can drive more time, you're going to make more money. So there's a fundamental conflict between those two things. So ideally, when you go to work for a truck driving company, you want to be working by the hour. That's the best way to do it because then you get paid for every hour you work. And this, you know, this may have been something that I should have been talking about earlier in terms of getting paid uh, when you're working long haul. Uh, and some of the crappy companies, you only get paid for the hours you are for the miles you run. So when you're sitting getting loaded, you're not getting paid. When you're sitting at the border trying to clear the load through customs, you're not getting paid. Uh, when you're sitting getting unloaded, you're not getting paid for that for the most part. Uh, so, you know, and I mean, but that, that stuff is starting to go away as the industry is getting better and there's more pay and those types of things. But there is a fundamental conflict between hours of service regulations and how the pay structure works. And that was exactly it in the 1990s when I was driving. The more miles I could drive, the more money I made and that's that's the way that it worked and this is the, the the incentive that causes truck drivers to work over hours of service regulations <laughs> okay uh, wheelman nine hours total driving time two days at 10 so yes very strict uh, hours of service in the uh, in Europe there and it's you know it's getting stricter here in North America as well and it should uh, Valerie, how are you, my friend? <laughs> Good to see you. Happy Easter. So, road signs. Uh, the other thing uh, that's going to be interesting about road signs, we talked about this the other day in terms of New York and uh, being prohibited, you know, no trucks allowed on side streets and those types of things. The problem with that is, is that when you turn the corner... <laughs> <laughs> there's the sign as soon as you turn the corner you're already made the turn and, and gone around the corner and there's the street that you can't be on with the large vehicle uh, in terms of three-dimensional height signs and those types of things uh, where a lot of drivers get into trouble with trees buildings uh, remember these things are what take bites out of trucks and large vehicles RVs and those types of things uh, wheelman those Australian big rigs super strong awesome uh, yep, some of them are wheelmen. Uh, they have super bees there, uh, which we have here in Canada, mostly Western Canada. We don't run them so much in Central Canada. Uh, but, uh, you know, those, some of those road trains, I mean, those are in the outback of Australia. The whole time that I lived there and I was in New South Wales and I was in Victoria, I never saw them. 
Uh, didn't even see them when I ran up to Parks, New South Wales, which is in the outback. Uh, but they are there, but they're not they're not as common as people think. Uh, in you know, they've made kind of a big deal out of them. Uh, we have a we have just a heap and a heap of super bees running up and down the road here in Western Canada, running logs and those types of things, and uh, those super bees run out at 140,000 pounds, which is 63,500 kilograms. Uh, and what distinguishes them as a super bee is, is that there's two trailers on the back of the truck and where the two trailers join together, they're joined together by a fifth wheel assembly and then underneath that is three axles and that's what makes them a super bee. All right, Eric, how are you my friend? Uh, happy Easter to you. Uh, Ryan, was it difficult to drive the truck at nighttime and reading the signs at the same time? Uh, no, Ryan, because road signs, as you may or may not know and some people may or may not know, road signs are reflective and because of the shape of signs and the color of the signs, you can get a fairly good clue of what the signs are about. Most signs along roadways are going to be cautionary signs. So they're going to be diamond in shape. They're going to be black lettering on a yellow background. Cautionary signs, you know, animal warning signs, uh, road curves to the right, road curves to the left, cautionary speeds about going around corners and those types of things. So know that that most of the signs are going to be cautionary. Some of them will be regulatory signs, but they're all going to be reflective and they're going to be easy to see at a following distance. Uh, the other thing about road signs that you can do if you're driving in inclement weather or whatnot, if you're driving in fog or rain or those types of things, know that for the most part, uh, road signs are going to be fairly close to the roadway. So at night and driving at night, road signs are going to allow you to be able to figure out where the road is and where it's going because one of the biggest challenges for driving at night for both passenger vehicles and truck and bus drivers is figuring out where the road is and where the road is going. Uh, and I didn't realize this until a few years ago when I was teaching truck drivers and I would take them out at night on an overnight run and I would realize that these drivers, these new drivers didn't, fi didn't know how to figure out where the road was going. And this is a, a, an, an incredibly important skill uh, when you're driving in places that you've never been before, <laughs> you need to figure out where the road is going so that you can drive safely and drive to the best of your ability at night. Because, you know, again, like I said, you're getting paid by the mile. Most of these truck drivers are going to get paid by the mile. You're not getting paid by the hour. Uh, and if you're driving a bus, you have to keep the bus uh, going according to a schedule. You have to be at point B at a certain time to pick up passengers. That's the point of having a bus and being on a bus route. And uh, if you're driving at night, you know, you have to figure out where the road goes. Uh, most of the time you're gonna be driving the same route over and over again, so it's gonna become familiar, but sometimes you're not gonna be on the same route. Uh, and the first time that I went into Sydney, Australia, <laughs> I had it all mapped out and I had it all plotted out because like I said, we didn't have GPS at that time. And I just handed the, the, the map to one of the passengers sitting behind me and I said to them, just read out the instructions of where we're going. The other thing that kind of helped too is, is that when the passengers on the bus knew that I was new and this was my first run into Australia, a couple of them kind of come up and they knew where they were going and they kind of helped me out. Uh, Eric, doing well, uh, referred by Carrie. Uh, love your channel too, I thought uh, spring was here. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't sound like spring is there in Minnesota. It sounds like you're getting snow. Uh, it was fairly cold here this morning. We did have frost overnight. So, uh, Epic, my friend. Happy Easter. Uh, Stone Arch Bridge is commonly seen in Northeast Parkways. Uh, vehicles like buses tend to go the midpoint, not uh, in New York City Parkways where they strike. Okay, so here's another interesting point, Epic. Uh, trucks... I don't know about buses, but I do know that trucks are not allowed on parkways in New York City and the Eastern Seaboard. So, and it's exactly that. Yes, those archways, yeah, you got to go through the center of the bridge. Uh, and you have to pay attention when you're driving a commercial vehicle, whether it's a truck or bus, you have to pay attention to the height signs because there's going to be a different height sign on the outside of the bridge. Uh, for those of you who may not know what we're talking about, we're talking about the bridges that have a curvature on them like this. And... On the outer outside edges, it's going to be lower than what it is at the center of the bridge. And that's where you want to stay is in the center of the bridge to get your large vehicle underneath that. It's the same thing if you're driving down a tree-lined street in a truck or bus. 
you want to be down the center of the road so that you're away from the trees that are gonna <laughs> strike your vehicle. And the number of drivers, bus drivers particularly, when I was in Melbourne, Australia, and Sydney, Australia, and those types of things, I would tell them, on a multi-lane road, on a bus, do not drive on the outside lane. Do not drive in the left lane, which is the inside lane for us. Because what happens is, is that when you're driving down the road, the, the road is cantered to the outside for water drainage. The, the bus leans over like this, and there's trees along the roadway. So if your bus is leaned over and you're driving down in the outside lane, you potentially could be striking trees as you're driving down the roadway. So you want to drive on the inside, the middle or the uh, inside, uh, outside lane so that you get away from those trees. And uh, we've, we've kind of got away from road signs and we're talking about uh, hours of service regulations and height signs and those types of things. Uh, the other places that uh, uh, we were delivering to a, a, an office in Chicago and the guy backed up and it was a tree line drive into the office structure and the guy backed up and he got too close to the tree and bent the stack on the top of his truck and that happens a lot uh, getting into trees and those types of things so remember when driving large vehicles and this is for all of you who not just truck drivers and bus drivers but also people who are driving RV units and those types of things higher vehicles that you get into those trees and trees are going to take a bite out of your vehicle <laughs> <laughs> you get things hanging off the side of buildings, air conditioning units and those types of things. All of those things are going to take bites out of your vehicles. Uh, bridges, low overpasses, those types of things. Uh, know that if you're in the city of Chicago, uh, Chicago, Illinois, there's 2,500 low bridges and overpasses. And one of the stories when we were down there, you know, a railway trestle. You go underneath the railway trestle when the train's not on it, but if the train is sitting on the railway trestle, it's sitting down three or four inches and that's not enough to go underneath the railway trestle. <laughs> so, you know, all kinds of crazy stories about overhead heights and overhead obstructions and striking those when you're driving truck or bus driver. But the point of tying that into road signs, which we're talking about, is that you have to read the road signs. You have to know, you have to memorize that in the United States of America, the maximum height of your vehicle is 13 feet 6 inches. When you're in Canada, it's 4.15 meters. If the sign does not say that, do not go tearing down underneath that bridge or overpass or you will take the top off your vehicle. All right. Uh, Wheelman, the signs in Europe are fairly similar right of way to friends driving in Europe approaching roundabouts. Uh, roundabouts always to the left and exit right. Yes. <laughs> That can be a bit confusing because we have roundabouts here. We drive on the right in Canada. I learned about roundabouts driving in Australia and driving on the left side of the road. So when you go into a roundabout in Australia and the UK, you have to stay to the left. And as uh, Wheelman says, when you go into a roundabout, when you're driving on the right, you have to stay to the right and go around in a counterclockwise direction. Make sure you get the right way. Uh, my friend Tim, Drive Smart BC, happy Easter. Our driving examiners say that seniors have a significant deficit in their ability to identify road signs. It must be difficult to multi-jurisdictional uh, drivers. Uh, for the most part, uh, Tim, road signs are universal. I mean, you know, and I, I find it interesting that that is, I would be interested in reading that information about that they have a significant dis, uh, deficit in their ability to identify road signs. I would be interested to know why that is. But at one and the same time, I think there's some correlation uh, between passenger vehicles who are upgrading their license to a CDL license who are not, who, who very apparently have not been reading road signs. Because when you start to go at these drivers to ask them what the last road sign was they passed, what it meant, what it said, what is how it is important to their driving. Uh, if passenger vehicle drivers are not reading road signs as is identified when they upgrade their license to a commercial license, then if seniors have been driving a passenger vehicle their whole life, have not upgraded their license to a larger vehicle, have not upgraded their license to a truck driving license and those types of things, then because they haven't been reading them their whole life or haven't been identifying them, because I think drivers as well are also guilty of simply following the traffic flow and simply doing what other people are doing because as we know, it's social driving, right? A lot of times that's what we do. We sit at the light, 
we're not really paying attention we're thinking about something else and the traffic starts to go and we just follow the traffic through the intersection and just go we don't actually look at the traffic light to see whether the traffic light has in fact changed green and, and this is one of the predictabilities on the roadway and so that's interesting what you say about seniors have a significant deficit in their ability to read to identify road signs because road signs I would say are somewhat predictable uh, you know stop signs are at intersections traffic lights are at intersections uh, yield signs really the only place that yield signs are now found uh, in North America anyway and Wheelman might be able to talk to this uh, the only place that we find yield signs is on slip lanes right turning lanes or uh, finding yield signs at roundabouts really they don't exist at conventional intersections anymore and then we have all kinds of cautionary signs on our roadways uh, that uh, you know most people don't pay attention to they're, they're simply following the traffic flow so I, I, I find that that bit of information really interesting uh, Kate yes signs is the most confusing thing for me on the road if it's unfamiliar it makes me think for a few seconds and loses my attention so maybe that that's an interesting point Kate that you you've said that and uh, you know I'm, I'm gonna kind of revisit some of the comments here in terms of road signs and those types of things because perhaps road signs as Tim is just saying here color shape and position can identify the message that you should be anticipating yes and so that's interesting because color because signs convey information in three ways is what Tim just said so the shape of the sign the colors of the sign you know the text on the background and then what is the symbols and what is written on it and you know I can there are a lot of road signs even though they are categorized they are broken down into different categories you know regulatory signs and then cautionary signs uh, school zone signs you know lane designation signs and hazard perception signs all of these not hazard perception signs that's not, not a category of road signs but you know now that I kind of think about this a little bit yes they can be confusing they are confusing there's a lot of, there's a lot of information and there and even though people like to think that these are consistent maybe they're not as consistent as those of us who are in like myself and Tim and other people who are talking about road signs maybe they're they're just there's they're too difficult and this is why people are not paying attention to them as Kate says that you know it takes her a few seconds and she loses her attention because she's trying to figure out what information is important in terms of that road sign uh, Carrie wondering if people do not pay attention to the signs because of distractions if so what would they say are the best techniques to reduce distractions while driving so I think uh, uh, Carrie I think it goes back to what Kate was saying in terms of that she just finds road signs too difficult that she's not gleaning the information from them quickly and because it's confusing and it and it causes you distraction as you're saying Carrie that people just give up on it and they don't do it they simply follow the other traffic instead of reading the road signs and being proactive in their driving they only take it to a certain skill or a, a certain level because that's the level that they have been required to take it to and there's been no you know training or those types of things uh, Amon uh, from Pakistan I still need CDL license how can I apply for a license in Pakistan uh, replying uh, so a man if you're gonna get a CDL license here in North America whether it's the United States or whether it's here in Canada uh, the first thing you have to apply for is a work visa so that's your first uh, step of getting a CDL license here in Canada or in the United States is either one of those countries you have to get a work visa to see whether you can come here and actually work uh, in the country and then pursue getting a CDL license uh, Eric even digital road signs uh, construction signs yes and there's a lot of those and you know it's interesting Eric years ago when I got my bus my school bus license because in the province of Ontario they have a, a separate school bus license and I went to get my school bus license to try and up my game in terms of trying to get a license uh, my driving instructors license and get hired as a driving instructor so I went and got my school bus license and the kaji old driving instructor came into the classroom we were at Fanshawe College in London Ontario and we're sitting there and we're waiting and he comes in he grabs a piece of chalk off the thing doesn't even say hi or introduce himself or whatnot scribbles on the on the blackboard he says name the four signs that warn us of hazards and obstructions on the roadway and of course you know I've been driving truck for five years at this time so uh, 
I was a, probably a little bit arrogant in terms of my abilities, in terms of driving and whatnot, and thought to myself, you know, how hard can this be? But I couldn't list the four signs that uh, talked about hazards and obstructions on the roadway, which are the most common signs, the ones with the hash marks on them. You know, they're rectangular in shape. They're on the edge of bridge abutments, concrete islands, those types of things, just about everywhere on the roadway. But the other one that he talked about was construction signs. And as Eric was saying, uh, construction signs, black writing on orange backgrounds, usually diamond in shape. But construction signs are absolutely everywhere. And he went on for a tirade, haranguing the whole class about how many people drive into construction holes and drive into construction equipment at incredible speeds. Uh, you know, they uh, ignore the, the uh, directional warnings of uh, traffic control people and whatnot. You know, and I've talked to uh, flag people who work in construction sites and talk about how dangerous and how much drivers ignore them and those types of things. And I actually took that course a couple of years ago. And on the training course, same thing. People just like drove through where we were flagging and completely dis, you know, disrespectful and, and dangerous driving as well. Uh, DC, back home, some people say road signs are for tourists only. No wonder we have accidents all the time. Yes, <laughs> interesting interesting uh point there dc and uh this has given me a lot of information to kind of think about this has been really great feedback uh that you've given me here and i'm going to incorporate a lot of this information kind of into uh into a defensive driving book that i'm working on uh and put this information in there because this is really really awesome information so uh where's burn i don't know go grab burn burn <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I'm, I'm the tiny little Easter bunny. And I can't. Yeah. Burn, let's go! <laughs> Serious! So, are you going to say happy Easter to everybody? Happy Easter! I got eggs. I got eggs. Yeah, so what happened this morning? I thought the Easter bunny died of COVID 19. But he actually came. <laughs> he actually came. So the Easter Bunny didn't. Mm -hmm. No? And what it, what happened? How did you figure out he, that? He brought eggs. Right. And um, this egg, this egg is um, different. Um, I'm gonna show you two different eggs. Okay, you have to look at the camera yeah, because they can't see you, what well, you're doing down there. I'm opening the wrapper. It's not very interesting to open wrapper. No. <laughs> it's not interesting. Okay, so these two are different. This uh, one is, I call it the dragon egg. It has caramel and chocolate, like chocolate, tough, really cho tough chocolate in it. And this one's just normal chocolate. Right. And we got chocolate milk from the Easter Bunny <laughs> also. Oh, and he's not here, my brother. Uh, Big Ryan Lima. I don't know. Yeah, he's deciding not to come out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Tim, you're probably missing uh, your granddaughter right now with this whole social distancing thing. Yeah, it would be pretty tough being away from my kids. I know that for sure. So, yeah, Burn is refusing to come out. He doesn't think he has anything to talk about. What bird did we see this morning? A uh, ringneck pheasant. A ringneck pheasant. We have those everywhere here up in the paddocks uh, in South BX. Uh, uh huh. Uh, and on the east side of Vernon. And we, um, me and my brother, we're gonna, um, we were talking about Minecraft. Um, if some of you know about Minecraft, it's a game where you can create stuff and build things. You can be in survival or creative, and creative is where you have all the stuff you need to make a house and things. And survival, you have to find stuff and build stuff. And we were planning on making these tree houses and mushroom houses because there are really big mushrooms. They're, like, really tall. And we want to make a mansion because we made another portal. If you want, we had another portal, and we wanted to make another another portal that connects us to an, uh, one of the villages that we've gone to. 
and we did that so I want to make a mansion and tree houses and mushroom houses there like around the village <laughs> yeah and we got to get like quartz which are stuff that you can make into blocks it's really fun it's a really fun game there you go so we're looking looking forward to doing that when you get at mm -hmm. mom's house because they're allowed video games at mom's house they're not allowed video games at dad's house and usually at mom's house i also watch um we usually watch these episodes that used to be on netflix and uh i that are called the avengers assemble and i like to watch them they're like really f good and i also sometimes play this game that mom got us on the nintendo it's like this uh video game it's called it's like these dc super villains you can be a super villain and then there's this t and then in the time in the video game where you get to decide if you want to if because there's like this cr this person that you create and so hall faces that minecraft 1.16 is coming out what's that it's another it's an update of minecraft oh that's on the play. xbox we don't play on the xbox we play on the ipad and <laughs> there you go it's a, our brother's it's our brother's world it's a, a my stepbrother's world his name is fabian and my stepsister doesn't like to play it with us it's usually just me my brother and my stepbrother there you go and um the video game as i was saying you got to create this person and you and when the the good guys team up with the bad guys they um at, in the end that you decide if you want to be good or evil <laughs> and burn chose to be good so you can show choose and i'm gonna choose to be evil because i like harley quinn and ivy they're one of my favorite characters because <laughs> there's only one girl in the justice league there we go excellent and farron's here farron is from south africa yay i like i like so what are you doing right now? Like what, were you work, what were you working on while I was doing the live stream? Uh, I'm working on a book. It's called. I'm. It's where you call. I'm coloring these pages of Avengers heroes. So I'm gonna do like a people that are like that you've seen in Avengers movie and color their pictures in and staple the book. And I'm gonna make it like a book, like I did with. I, can I go grab my book? Yep. Um. Quick. We're almost done. <laughs> See, I'm not supposed to say that almost done because that's triggering language that the video is almost over. You're not supposed to say that. You're just supposed to end the video. <laughs> uh, um, I did this before. It wasn't like my best book. So this is my first page. And then I've got this one, Bambi. Okay, just show them a couple of the This pages. is Wonder Woman, if I forgot to say. I didn't do her hair right. And then, um, I've also got... Oh, there you go. Show them that picture, because that's relevant for today. And then I've got Black Widow. All right. Ah, uh, what a favorite. Eric asked you, he said, what's, what's the favorite game that we play together? Funny. <laughs> what's the favorite game that we do together? I don't know. You and don't... this is Batgirl. <laughs> and then I've got a Pegasus. And then I've got a mermaid with blue skin and a dolphin. And I've got another girl writing that. Carrie says she loves your coloring. And this isn't my best coloring. I don't like it. And then I have this. And then I've got this one. Okay, you need to hold it up in front of the camera so and they can see it. And then I've got out. this. There you go. My Shopkins. And then I've got background Zippy Girl. And then I've got a koala. There's some of you in Australia. You might have seen it. My dad says he's only seen one once. <laughs> yeah, koalas are elusive. Here's another Black Widow. This book wasn't my favorite. This isn't my favorite. I didn't really have any good markers. And after I finish my Avengers Women, I'm uh, gonna... This is... I think this is... Um, maybe Phoenix, the Phoenix Girl and X Men. I'm gonna make a X Men book. Also, this is Adele. I'm gonna do an X Men book and a whole bunch of books of people in movies. And then this one I did. This one's my favorite. 
and that is my book. So I think Eric, to answer Eric's question, I think one of the things that we do a lot uh, as a family is we do a lot of cooking and baking in the kitchen, right? Mm-hmm. I love to bake. It's yeah. one of my favorite things. My grandma got me <laughs> this box with a whole bunch of cooking cups and spatulas and a cooking book, a lot of things that were really amazing. And there's a book that she wrote recipes in, and um, you can add recipes. I really like it. There you go. Awesome. Mm-hmm. That's, that's a lot of stuff that you're working on. So can we thank everybody? Bye. Thank you, everybody. Happy Happy Easter. Easter. All the best. And take care of yourself. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. God bless. Bye now. God bless.